So we're still doing applications of vectors, displacement and velocity, collisions. This time we're going to run some particles into each other. Uh, now you've done this sort of thing before in uh, Matt's methods where you've got a train starting from here and a train starting from there and they run into each other. When do they run into each other? Where do they run into each other? Simultaneous equations is kind of the application. That's, where you, that's how you do it. Here it's no different. We're going to do some simultaneous equations with vector quantities. Let's take a look. Uh, particle A starts moving from the origin with a constant velocity of the velocity of particle A equals 3i plus 4j. Three seconds later, particle B starts from the origin and moves in the same direction as A with a constant speed of 7 metres per second. When and where will B catch up to A? So we're going to want position vectors for both of these particles. Now, a position vector for the first particle, particle A, let's think about what that looks like. Um, the origin to particle A is going to be equal to the amount of time it's traveling times its velocity vector. So T times 3i plus 4j. Uh, all right, so there's a um, position vector for um, particle A. Now, this next bit's a little more complicated. Take a look at what they're saying. Three seconds later, so it waits, and then it goes, particle B starts from O and moves in the same direction as A with a constant speed of 7 meters per second. So it's moving in the same direction as that, but at a different speed. So we can't just use the vector, um, the velocity vector, because it has a different velocity. Same, same direction, though. So how can I come up with uh, the, first of all, the velocity vector for A, for B, sorry. So we can say that VB is going to be equal to the constant speed, 7, times the unit vector of 3i plus 4j the unit vector of VA. Um, now the unit vector, we can kind of do this in our head, 3i plus 4j, they've made it easy for us. Uh, the magnitude of 3i plus 4a, 4j is 5, uh, so the unit vector is going to be 7, oh sorry, the unit vector is going to be 1 fifth of 3i plus 4j. All right, so I have a velocity for a velocity vector for b now of seven fifths three i plus four j. Now I need to come up with the same thing that I've got here, which is a um, position vector. So op for b is going to be equal to not t. Uh, because t is the time that that one started, but this one doesn't start until three seconds later. So it's going to be t minus three. And then we multiply it by this velocity vector times seven over five, three i plus four j. Um, and then we can just kind of tidy that up a bit. 7 bracket t minus 3 over 5 bracket 3i plus 4j. All right, what we have now are two position vectors for uh, particle A and particle B. Now, we just need to make it so that the two particles are in the same place at the same time. Um, to do that, we can just let them equal each other. We're doing a simultaneous equation. So I can say t bracket 3i plus 4j equals 7t minus 3 over 5 bracket 3i plus 4j. Now you might be a bit freaked out here because suddenly we've got to do simultaneous equations with vectors, but take a look. We've got a vector 3i plus 4j there. We've got a vector 3i plus 4j there. We can cancel them out. And really, we just need to solve the fairly simple equation t equals 7, t minus 3 over 5. 
All right. So it's going to be um, 5t over 7 equals t minus 3. Uh, oh, I wish I hadn't have done that. All right, we'll just keep going. 5t equals 7t minus 21. Um, just multiplying both sides by 7. And then we have uh, 7t minus 5t, 2t equals 21. So t equals 10.2. Five. All right, so after 10.5 seconds, particle B will be exactly where particle A is. And the question was, when and where will B catch up to A? So we have the when, we just don't have the where yet. If we sub 10.5 into either of these functions, we'll get the where. So I can say OPA equals 10.5 uh, 3i plus 4j. I shouldn't have switched to like decimal numbers, should I? I should have just gone with 21 over 2. Uh, so 21 over 2, we have 63 over 2i plus uh, 84 over 2, which is 42 over 1, which is 42. 42j. All right, so that's the when, that's the where. We're just using vectors in similar ways to what we've used, uh, just scalar quantities in the past. So nothing new there, just using what we've learned in a different way. It'll be a bit tricky. Um, a particle starts from O with a constant velocity of 3i plus 4j. That's handy numbers. The magnitude must be 5. At the same time, a second particle starts moving with a constant velocity from point B, where OB equals 25J. Given that the two particles meet their, and their paths are at right angles, find this and this. So I just want to just draw like the starting positions, just so we get a feel for what's happening. Um, so draw it up here, we just make a little axis. All right, there's our axis. We have um, a particle starts from the origin with a constant velocity of 3i plus 4j. So it's moving in sort of that ish direction. Just keep it moving. Now, there's another object, um, velocity, uh, particle b, that starts from point b, uh, which they're calling 25j. So there's um, particle b. Now, given that the two particles meet, so they're going to cross over at some point, and their paths are at right angles, right angles, um, find the position vector of the point where they meet. So we need to find that point. If we find that point, we've found the position vector. And we also need to find the velocity of the second particle. So a uh, tricky question. Uh, probably the key insight here is that their paths are going to be at right angles, uh, which means that their velocity vectors uh, dot product is going to be equal to zero. All right, just label that up for you there. Uh, now, what we can say is that vector OP dot vector BP is going to be equal uh, to zero. So, uh, vector OP, vector OP is going to be the velocity vector times time. So, T, uh, 3i plus 4j, that's going to be vector OP. Now, if we want to know vector BP, we could say that that's vector uh, BO plus OP. Now, we know BO and we know OP. So, BO is BO, so negative 25J. Uh, and OP is T3I plus 4J. And now we can sort of rearrange that to be 3TI, negative uh, 25J. Uh, and then the other one's going to be J. J and 4t minus 
25. 40j minus 25j. All right. What does that mean? We've got three important things now. We've got BP, we've got OP, and we also know that OP.BP is equal to zero. So if we find the dot product of those and let it equal zero, we should be able to do a little bit of solving, I think. All right, so we've got um, 3ti plus 4tj. Uh, that's vector OP. I've just expanded it. The dot product of uh, this one here, which is um, 3ti plus 4t minus 25j. And that's going to be equal to zero. Now, if we do the dot product there, multiply the i's together, we get 90 squared. Multiply the j's together, we get um, 4t times 4t minus 25. And we say that's equal to zero. And um, expand that out a little, we'll go 9t squared plus 16t squared minus 100 t equals zero. Uh, what do I get? I get 25t squared minus 100t equals zero. Uh, and then we can set that up to be, I see a common factor of 25t, uh, t minus four, minus four equals zero. So we get two answers for t here. We can say, therefore, t is equal to 0 because 25t must be equal to 0, or t is equal to 4. So two answers there that we can consider. So uh, does t equals 0 make sense? Well, we've been told that the particles don't meet at time 0. They're somewhere else at time 0. So time 0 must be out. The answer must be time 4. So we're trying to find the position vector of the point where they meet. So we can just put time four into either of these should work. Uh, but let's put it into the top one there. That feels like it's going to be a lot easier. OP equals uh, four, uh, three I plus four J. The position vector of where they meet looks like 12i plus 16j. Okay, uh, part B, the velocity of the second particle. Well, we need a velocity function for it. A formula, s equals tv. Now, time is four seconds. Now, we know at the four second mark that um, bp is uh, this but with four in for t so it would be uh, 12i plus uh, 16 minus 25 12i minus 9j okay uh, and the velocity vector is the thing we don't know so if I now take, uh, that's a V there. If I now divide both sides by four, I'll get uh, 12i minus 9j all over four is my velocity vector, which is 3i minus nine over four j. Uh, now just sort of check it a little bit. It seems to be moving off in this direction. It's moving to the right, it's moving down. That feels like it probably makes sense. Now, given it's a velocity vector, I really should give it a unit um, meters per second. All right, a lot to take in there. Uh, only two questions they took a little while to get through, but lots of moving parts.